Hey everybody, I'm Kathy Hester and welcome to my kitchen. Today we're going to make a chestnut praline syrup for our coffees, teas, hot chocolate, cocktails, really whatever you want. So basically this is a Starbucks copycat. I found some chestnuts super on sale because it was right before Christmas. Now it is right after Christmas when I'm filming this and I've got some chestnuts. So fresh chestnuts look a little bit like this. These may be a little bit softer than optimal, but that's okay. We're going to do it. But if it's really soft, mushy, moldy, say no. But I got these, this is probably about a half a pound in this bag and I got it for 99 cents which is awesome. So also I haven't really found a lot of chestnut praline syrups and I like making my own syrups and we'll talk about a few different ways that we can make it as far as sweeteners. Today what we're going to do though is I'm going to be using some pecans with this. So basically we're going to take, we're going to roast our uh, chestnuts, lightly roast the pecans, make kind of a milk out of it, sort of, and then we're going to put it in the instant pot and infuse it in with the sh sugar. I'm going to be using organic dark brown sugar today, but you could go ahead and I'll put down in the comments, you could use maple syrup, you could infuse date syrup, you can infuse a lot of other things. So this can fit with your dietary needs as long as you're not allergic to nuts. These are the pecans I'm always talking about that are from Cheryl's work. She works for EBSCO Industries. Um, and these are the chestnuts that I got. So the first thing we need to do, and we'll take all these out, you want to make sure they're all okay, none, uh, none are moldy or anything like that, and these are pretty good. So what we need to do is put an X in each one. And this is because if we roast these without doing that, they're going to steam and explode. And we don't want that. So you're just going to take a knife, and you're just trying to make an X through that top layer, right? We don't have to cut all the way through into the nut. If you do, ooh, see that one's nasty. So we're gonna take that one out. This one was not nasty, so we can leave it in. And so we'll keep looking at that. Because again, these are a little bit bargain chestnuts. So I'm gonna kind of keep a peek. See, that one's fine. And then I'm going to just move this tray over and we'll put them on here. When we're cutting them, the one thing that's important, this one is an exception. It's kind of flattish on both sides. Most of them are flat or on one side. So see how that settles and it's easier to cut. Whereas if I was trying to do this, it would be a little more dangerous. See, flat side, round side on the bottom. We want to do this on the round side. And if you've got the bargain chestnuts like me, then we'll check the meats just to make sure we're not putting anything gross in there. If we do, honestly, you just won't put it in your finished product. And this is the one that kind of has two flat sides, so it feels odd. And you want a fairly sharp knife, but you're, I'm not putting too much effort into it. But I did try it with just like a little, um, little small knife and that was not enough sharp for it either. Okay. Oops, that one didn't actually take. This one's thicker. Ooh. There we go. And it's okay to not be perfect on this. We just don't want things exploding. That's really our big thing. Let's not have, and this one has kind of two rounded sides, so I'm going to be a little more careful as far as holding my fingers down so that it's not going to, what we don't want is for it to slip and us to cut our hand. And I believe some people only cut it um, across, but cutting it in an X will make it a little easier to get the good meat out later, the nut meat, obviously. We are not talking the other kind of meat because this is vegan cooking. Okay, so now all of these have their little things on them, so I'm gonna move them a little bit closer to me. And we're just gonna, again, we're gonna, we are gonna toast these, but we'll do that 
when we pull these out. So I, since I found that one that had mold in it, I'm just going to check these a little bit. We'll also can find the mold another time. That one was super obvious. And see, that one's obvious too. There was a big piece of mold on that one. So I'm just, again, checking. Yeah, that one's fine. I can take that little piece away. And you'll notice that if you haven't worked with chestnuts before, they do have some fuzz under there. So that fuzz is not mold. It's going to be more of a blue mold sort of situation going on. Okay, so this is what we're ending up with. And it looks very different because I actually had two packs of chestnuts and probably half of them were not so good because, again, I'm doing them older. So I did cut in deeper, which you, if you've bought these fresh, you don't need to do. I just wanted to do that because, like, see some of these, that has just a tiny bit of mold in it, but a lot of them were, like, really moldy. So I wanted to check each one, and that's why these are cut a little deeper, just for transparency. So what we're going to do is we're going to put this in the oven. It's been preheated at 425, and we're going to do it anywhere between 15 and 25 minutes just to see if the shell has softened and it will steam and open up some, although we're not going to have some of that problem <laughs> since I've had to cut extra. Um, and that the nut is cooked. And again, when we're taking this off, there's kind of this white papery stuff. We're going to remove that as well, but that'll be the next step. Okay, so now the chestnuts are out of the oven. They look a little different because I cut them all the way through. So that's one thing to know. So these are, yours aren't going to look quite like that, but these are nice and soft. They should come out of the shells pretty easily. I'm going to take this and just kind of scoop all these hot chestnuts <laughs> into a clean dish towel. And if you didn't cut all the way through like I did, it's gonna be even more important that you do this. So we're just kind of doing it just for the heck of it. But chances are you possibly went out in the woods and got your own chestnuts and yours are super fresh or they're just super fresh. So we're just gonna close this up a little bit and what that does is, I don't know if you can see, but even from there, there's a little moisture, which is from them trying to steam. So this basically steams them. If you have some particularly difficult ones, maybe a batch that you know about already, you could cut them, boil them a little bit, and then put them in the oven because that extra liquid will let them steam. So while that's kind of taking maybe five or 10 minutes to kind of steam in here, and you can feel that this, this is a little bit moist, I've turned the oven off. So I steam these at 425 for 15 minutes, and that worked really well. These are, you do not need pretty pecans like this. This is what we get every year for Christmas. I'm going to put this on the same tray and I'm going to stick it in the oven. The oven's off, but there's still a lot of heat in there. So we're going to keep it for maybe, I'm going to check it probably in three minutes. We just want them to get a little toastier. It'll make for a better flavor. And that's what we're going for. So while that's happening, let's take a look at these guys and we're just going to get the meats out. And you can see that they're kind of fuzzy on the inside too. So I could also just peel them off or actually, what is going to be best to do? Let's see which ones are ready to go just right off the thing. Okay, so that's come out, but it's still in that fuzzy thing. So we want to take that fuzzy part off and end up with something that looks like this. So this one's going to probably do it again. So see, there you go. And you want to let this cool enough that you feel comfortable handling them. I can handle things a little hotter than most because I'm in the kitchen all the time. Okay. And actually, I don't like that one. So that one I'm going to leave. It looked like it had possibly barely a speck of mold on there, but that was a speck enough. <laughs> so we're just going to get these guys out. 
our little nuts. So for the pecans, they were in there for three minutes. They're not really particularly darker, but if you smell them, they smell just a little more fragrant. And that's all we're going for. And that was about a cup and a half of pecans. We could easily have more chestnuts or more pecans. It's really up to you and what you want to do. And I may, because my chestnuts were not as good as I thought they were, I may end up using less of these pecans, but it's still okay that they're toasted. I can use them for something else. Okay, so now we've got our chestnuts out of all of our mess, and it's all contained in the here, which will make it easier for cleanup. And our pecans have kind of cooled down. So there's a couple of ways that we can do this. We could kind of roughly, in between roughly chopping and finely chopping, and just infuse it into the sugar syrup that we're gonna make. Or we can make this a creamy syrup and kind of make it um, in the Vitamix and kind of blend things together a little more. I'm gonna kind of do in between. So I'm gonna let the Vitamix kind of chop some of these things up for me. Another thing to know is instead of the brown sugar that I'm gonna use, you could easily use coconut sugar the same amount. I'm gonna use about a cup and a half because this is a syrup, so it's supposed to be really sweet and we use a little bit. So if you decided you wanna use maple syrup or date syrup to infuse that, down below you can find the link to my fall harvest syrup. And what I do is that's with infused maple syrup basically, and I put it in a mason jar and then put it in the Instant Pot with some water in it. Why do I do that? Because maple syrup is really expensive. It's even more expensive this year. So that way you're not losing some as you're trying to scrape everything out. I don't worry about that as much with this as it is, but with maple syrup, I'm super stingy. So we're gonna go ahead and put our sugar, and this could be coconut sugar, could be white sugar, though I think brown sugar is really just a better thing. We're gonna put our kind of chunky nut mix in here. And it being in pieces is just going to help it infuse a little bit better and faster, get that flavor into the water and sugar. And I may add a little bit more water. This smells amazing. And I think I'm gonna leave it like this. We can always thin it later if we need to. As long as this is not so thick that it won't come up to pressure, it's fine. Okay, I'm gonna cook this on high pressure for 10 minutes. It'd be best if you at least let this natural pressure release or don't do anything, let it just do its own thing for 10 minutes. Because what can happen is it can kind of boil, almost. it's almost like it boils over when you open that, everything comes up. That's gonna be a lot to clean on the lid. So if you let the pressure release naturally, the cleanup's gonna be much, much easier. Okay, so this has released its pressure naturally. I've got something to strain it into. And this is a fine mesh strainer. And this one actually is like a Jamie Oliver brand and it's doubled. So it's really good for straining different kinds of nut milks and things anyhow. Okay. You can see from the top and it's quite thick. So we may end up adding a little more liquid It smells really good. So we can see, I don't, chances are also since we let it cool some, or at least I let it sit here probably for about 20 or 30 minutes, honestly. And that was more time that this was able to infuse in. And you can taste it. Oh my gosh, it's so good. 
It's so, so very, very good. And so we're gonna kind of try to carefully do this. Let's see if I can. So I'm gonna pour some of the sludge in here. And I am not losing any of this. It tastes really dark and woodsy, very wintry fall. And so what I usually do, and I mean, you could, you, you could let it cool all the way down and use a nut milk bag if you want. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just not my thing. Okay. And I'm just, and also with what's left over, this would be really good in um, a quick bread. And I might, because it's going to have a little bit of sugar in it. It's got chestnuts and pecans. So maybe, we'll see, maybe I'll make a video on that or at least give it a, I'm going to be giving it a go because there's no way I'm throwing all this out. Because <laughs> there's going to be a good bit. And like I said, we can thin this out if it's too much of like a thick creamer instead of more of a syrup. That's not a problem. And probably, I, if I end up doing that, I'll change the recipe slightly. And you can kind of press this down. I'll let you see it from the top. So what you're kind of doing is just pressing out all that yummy liquid. This almost looks like the inside of a candy bar. And that could be something cool to do with it too, actually. Just to melt some chocolate and then make this the inside. I can think of a lot of things to do. And right now, it's still coming out, but it's very, very, very thick. It's much more of a sauce than a syrup right now. And I'm probably going to go ahead and grab a bowl. Grab a little bowl. And I'm going to, I may squeeze some more of this out later. I'm going to go ahead and there's lots on the bottom here so that it just makes it a little easier. I'm going to take that out. And you can see right there how thick it is. Okay, and let's get some more in here. Possibly the rest, maybe. Maybe not. I think we're going to have to do three rounds with the size I have or two and a half rounds. And so what happens as this pushes in is it, it basically clogs up the holes. So what we're doing by scraping around is we're scraping that out of the holes and letting more come through. So when you have something thick like this, you'll get better results by moving it around than just going away and waiting for it to, to just dissolve. You definitely smell the dark of the pecan, the woodsiness of the chestnuts, and you get a little hint of the molasses that's in the brown sugar. And you can really kind of see how that is much drier than this. So what are some of the things that you could use this for? Obviously, you can make a copycat Starbucks chestnut praline latte. <laughs> that would be the first thing. I'm also thinking it would be really good to make some kind of bourbon cocktail or um, non-alcoholic mocktail. And that's something else that I'm probably going to be trying out with the syrup. You could, let's say you really love chestnut lattes and they're not around all the time chestnuts you could go ahead and make extra and freeze it it should freeze just fine it probably as thick as my syrup is it definitely well any of these syrups that you're making homemade i would recommend that you go ahead and store in the fridge and i always store mine in the fridge because they're just more volatile we're not like topping it up and going through some kind of pasturation process after this happens. So you want to keep it as cold as possible. And 
the more that we've incorporated some of the nuts and things like in this one, sometimes the, the shorter the lifespan will be because this is more nut to sugar. If we added more sugar, that would also extend the shelf life. So one of the things I could do is thin this very thick sauce out with um, simple syrup instead of just using water. And we'll see how the taste is and that's how I'll decide. Could you make this with some kind of alternative sweetener like stevia or monk fruit or something like that that's very powerful at small amounts? You can, it's not gonna keep as long. Um, so if you make a larger batch, you might wanna freeze some of it in ice cube trays, maybe in a tablespoon, which is probably what you would use per serving. And what I would do is just put the nuts in the water and infuse the water with that. And then when you're doing this process, then come back and sweeten it with any kind of drops if you're looking to use something like that. If you're using something like coconut sugar, you can do one-to-one. -one. Vegan sugar, one-to-one. -one. Um, if you wanted to do maple syrup or date syrup, then I would infuse this into there. I think this mixture in particular might be really hard to do with with the maple syrup just because i think it's going to take it's taking me a lot of time just to get the water out if it was maple syrup it's going to be even thicker so just think about that all right so i'm going to put some more of this in and just see if i can squeeze anything else out this definitely looks like this should be candy so this would probably make, if I put something else in the middle with it, it'd probably make a great truffle filling. But beyond that, it would be amazing in oatmeal. <laughs> this would just be amazing. And I'm still getting some more syrup out, so I'm gonna keep going. I've got right now about one and a half cups, and probably after I'm done with this, I may come back and see if I can squeeze a little more out, but there's probably almost a quarter cup I got out already. So yeah, we put in two cups of water, so we should be able to get out about that much if we work hard and we live right, <laughs> right? So this is pretty thick and there's nothing wrong with this. In fact, you could use this as like a base for a little piece of cake or something like that. You could use this sauce just fine. I think if I add more water, it's gonna take down the sweetness. So I'm adjusting the recipe right now and I think I'm gonna get another cup of water and another cup of brown sugar. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put that in something, you could heat it on the stove, I'm gonna heat it in the microwave really quick and then we're gonna add it. Okay, so I've got one packed cup of brown sugar and some water. Stick it in the microwave. So I just put it in for about 45 seconds. It's not all dissolved, but I'm gonna see if it's warm enough. If not, I'm gonna put it in for another 15 or 20. And I think that's doing pretty darn good. And now I have kind of this brown simple syrup. It's sweet deliciousness. Okay, so now I can just keep pouring some in and see how it works. I think right now it's gonna be about right. Okay, so this is our leftovers and nothing's coming through there. So I'm gonna pour some of this in here while I'm whisking until it's a I'm only going to use half of it to begin with, or about half of it. And see, this is a much better consistency. Get a little bit more in there. And that's about half of it. Now, if I don't use all of it right now, I could use that in all kinds of drinks as well. So you could make a hot cider and put a little bit of this in we could actually come back and spice it similarly to what we did here that's that's a little more what i'm looking for let me get a spoon 
got a spoon and I'm going to taste it. And this is what I'm looking for. Do I still taste those nuts? Oh yeah. And it is a little sweeter. I think it was not quite sweet enough to be a syrup. So when you're tasting a syrup, it's not like tasting a cookie. When you taste a cookie or tea with your favorite sweetener in it, it should taste just right. If you're tasting a syrup, basically we're tasting the sweetener that would go into your tea or coffee. So it needs to be a little extra sweet, but still have a very strong flavor of whatever we've infused. So I'm gonna put a little bit more in. Right now I think we're right at half. And it's dripping everywhere. <laughs> as anything sticky and sweet is likely to do. And I'll let you see this from above again. And so you can see it from above. See how much thinner it is, how it looks much more like a syrup. We're at about two cups right now, which is a little more what I'm hoping for. I'm going to taste it one more time. I think it's really good. Yeah, I think that that works for me. So you could have left it the way it was. You could leave it very thick. You could thin it out even more. I did one cup of water and one cup of sugar. And so maybe what we could have done is a half a cup of each instead. And it could, your mileage may vary too. What if you didn't have quite enough nuts? Or maybe these nuts had a little more oomph in them, right? So let's recap all of this. So what we did is we had fresh chestnuts, which are a little bit of a pain in the behind. We had to score them with X's, cook them for about 15 to 25 minutes in a 425 oven. We put them in a dish towel. We let them kind of steam themselves so we could get, the, get them out of their shells pretty easily. You could skip that whole step by buying pre-roasted already shelled chestnuts. There is no shame in that at all. Then we added some pecans. If you didn't have pecans, you probably could just double up on the chestnuts, but you're not gonna get the same richness. So I would suggest if you can get pecans, hazelnuts might be my next choice for that. Um, if you couldn't get pecans, I would not use walnuts. You could use almonds if you wanted to. The flavor isn't really gonna bring as much to it because I don't think almonds have that darker, richer flavor that pairs so well with chestnuts. And hazelnuts do, they're just a little more bitter than a, a, a pecan. Then we kind of infused it, we quick infused it by putting it in the Instant Pot for 10 minutes. I was, I played cheater and I, actually chopped up the hazelnuts and the pecans in the blender. You could have just chopped them up yourself by hand if you don't have a blender or something like that. Put it in with the water and the sugar. Let it cook for 10 minutes. Let it release the pressure naturally. Then strain. And then you can adjust it just like I have. You can either add a little more sweetener or water. Like if it was too sweet. If I had tasted that and I was like, oh, it's too sweet for me, you could have just added a little water. I knew if I added more water, it was gonna lose that sweetness that I want in my coffee. So that some of it is gonna be personal taste. But anyhow, I hope that you enjoy this and I know it's a little more complicated than some of the recipes I do, but don't hesitate to do the cheater parts, okay? Have an amazing rest of your day.